What's up YouTube, Promise Keeper. Uh, today I'm gonna talk quickly about your NICE certification. Um, Water-based systems layout specifically. Uh, we are talking fire protection because most of you will have no idea what I'm referring to. I passed my level one and level two NICE a long time ago. And uh, it's taken a long time to finally start level three. Uh, I had nobody that I've worked with um, to get any kind of help on with this. Here I am hoping that if you don't have a lot of human resources to pull from uh, preparing for your own exam, I want to tell you what I did. And because it worked for me, and not just me, but a week after I took my level three general plans test and passed, um, our rookie engineer across the hall from me, he passed his level one. Now, here's, here's how I know I can promise you you will pass. I studied this way too late. Um, on this side of me, you'll see all four levels worth of the hard print study guides FireTech produces. Um, a big do not do, do not by this. If you saw my last video where you've been to the blog I put together several years ago, the NTC uh, certification guide, I'd already known from my previous disappointments that it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It does have study questions. Do not waste 80, 100, 100 some odd dollars on that book to get study questions you're not going to be prepared. Um, in that book, you get the same thing repeated in every section. It explains how to register and sign up for your NICET test over and over again. Um, fill the book. The practice tests, there's 10 of them. That was what made me aware I needed to do something else because there were questions I didn't feel prepared to answer from the paperback books um, but the questions were wrong I was very very disappointed that not just misspellings but entire words were missing from a question and there were I don't know three or four questions where their own answer key I am 100% confident their answer key was wrong didn't happen with fire tech um, <laughs> their user interface is great um, any question you get wrong, it will explain why. I bought these several years ago because I was supposed to start my upgrade in the certification a long time ago, and it just never happened. I don't know what your guys' experience have been since, uh, you know, 2015 till now, um, but it's been insane, and it hasn't stopped. Despite product being near impossible to find and costing way too much business has not slowed down i bought these thinking they would be a better long-term investment i've read them multiple times even though all i was focusing on was general plans i read each book um, what i can tell you is if you're going to buy these a lot of what you read in the level one and two you will read again in the level three Here's the problem with the books. You don't remember it. It doesn't stick. There's no practical application to it. Uh, I waited until two weeks before my level three test to buy FireTech's online program. I passed. <laughs> had I not done their online setup, had I not pushed early mornings and late nights for those two weeks to make sure I went through all of the material, make sure I took every quiz and did my best to take all of the simulated exams, I would not have been ready. I would not have known what section in 13, 14, 20, 22 was important. Um, they recommend highlighting in multiple colors. That worked out excellent. Um, I used blue to keep track of basically areas that were specific to answers in the online practice test. I used green to try and highlight 
most of the actual section headlines and uh, my book was already full of yellow highlighters didn't help me a whole lot uh, but use the the yellow highlighter to just get the little bit of information that stands out in each one of those sections if you follow what fire tech tells you to do in the program whatever it hits on specifics highlight it and if you don't do that highlight everything that is an answer to this practice quiz in the book. On the topic of the books, the uh, Pearson View receptionist that checked me in, she's like, oh wow, you are so organized. Some people don't come in here like that. I don't know what other kind of tests the people are taking, uh, but I have a separate binder for all four of the codes I brought with me. And if you notice, I did go with the fire tabs those are kind of helpful. Um, part of me thinks it would have been less confusing without having them in the way. 13, 14, 20, and 22. And uh, at the time I took the test, which is July, <laughs> um, July 2021, this was all still based on 2016 editions of NFPA. Um, the Pearson View Center that I went to in my area was excellent like i was i was extremely nervous until i walked in and started the process um, the people that worked there were extremely professional and very friendly uh, they still they still make you wear a mask um, even all the way through your exam they scan your hands several times all kinds of hand sanitizer everywhere you go uh, you have to lock all of your belongings in the locker no wallet no keys you will take your driver's license um, and the key to the locker they give you. They they let me pat myself down, but they are thorough. Turn your pockets inside out. They scan your hand again, give you your little uh, um, dry erase board to take with you. And the computer stations were probably what I was most worried about because in the old style format, before Pearson View was in this, you were one of like 50 people in a room together and you you could be elbow to elbow um, at just some eight foot folding tables that have been set out. Um, the Pearson View setup, there might have been 15 or 20 people in the room, um, but the exterior is all workstations. Uh, I had at least four foot and at least three foot depth to lay out each book and still have room to to jot something down if I needed to. I sat down at the desk and I was extremely comfortable. Um, when I read the first question, I thought, I'm gonna pass this test. <laughs> um, the test itself, the advice given is answer every question. And if you don't know the answer, put an answer down and flag it. That worked out amazing. Um, I think I flagged 10 to 12 questions. I didn't leave anything that I was like, no, I absolutely don't know the answer. I, I had a starting point, but something just didn't feel right. Given the 170 minutes you have to take the test, when I answered the last question, I still had 45 minutes to go back and look at the answers that I had flagged. Um, and I finished all of those fairly confident with my answers and ended the test with somewhere like three minutes left. It was getting close. There was nothing extremely difficult, uh, let's say mathematically. There wasn't, there wasn't really anything where it was, what would you do? Or, uh, you know, what's the best, what's the best option given these scenarios? Um, the, the study guides, uh, the guide online, It'll spend a lot of time on project management or, uh, you know, how you should treat things in an office setting. Uh, it gives you a lot of what if kind of questions. Um, on my test, I don't think I had any like that. Uh, the focus, the focus of mine was um, a few fire pump questions, just a couple about tanks, um, standpipes, which is still confusing. I, I'm just, there are some standby questions that I don't think I will ever be able to give you a confident answer on. Um, so make sure you spend time 
on that with the study guide. Uh, and besides that, it was, it was a lot of questions geared towards storage. There was one very random one that described a sprinkler head and then asked you which head was this most likely. That question I didn't, I, I'm not confident I answered right. I don't want to tell you what the question was because I'm not supposed to do that. Um, but that was the only, that was the only one where there was not an answer in the book, our, our rookie engineer who doesn't have a lot of time as an engineer, he's been given a lot of projects that are rubber stamp. Um, he was able to pass the test easily. He waited last minute, even more last minute than I did to uh, sign up for the level one online. Uh, but had he not done it, he wouldn't have passed. And surprisingly, a lot of that focus he said was based on doing hydraulics. They had a lot about determined pressure and flow. If this is the orifice. Um, they wanted uh, that they they made him at least calculate back two heads worth of uh, the friction loss in a piece of pipe. And if you need this pressure at the first head, what does the pressure at the second head have to be? If you if you do it on FireTech's online test, you will know it when it comes time to sit down at Pearson View and you're on the clock, uh, ready to go. My little whiteboard. I used it for two small problems. And one was basically to keep track of simple multiplication and addition. Um, it asked me a question like, uh, these two pipe arrangements have to be installed on this project. And then you had to figure out which one was the most affordable. It's the best way to put it. And that, again, that was okay. Well, one inch costs this much and I have a hundred feet of it. So that must mean 100 feet of one inch costs added all together. I am curious, how do you guys operate uh, in, in whatever, whatever size sprinkler company you are in? Um, I am technically one of one and a half designers. Like I said, our, our newest guy is still very new at this and Corona has screwed up all chance of a normal, a normal work training. But as, as just a level two, I've been working my butt off the last several years, essentially by myself. I'm curious how big are the companies you work for? Um, I think in total, if you're counting the office and our, uh, our field, our, our fitters are all union, um, nothing like that in the office. We have 50 total. There's, 15, maybe 20 of us in the office altogether. How big are you guys? What are your office setups like? I spent a lot of years feeling like I didn't have enough. And it is a very strange feeling to feel like, what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> um, 65 inch monitor, that was just an inexpensive TV, but it, it works amazing. It was an adjustment going to one screen to two and then two to three, but uh, you know, I can't work without it at this point. Um, I'm running a really, a really expensive uh, Dell laptop. So I've got a portable workstation um, and that laptop is running all four monitors. I feel like that puts a lot of stress on it. Um, being Dell, it's running Microsoft and I've had this machine basically bricked on me twice. It is maybe a year old now. I say maybe, it may be a year old now. Motherboard went bad, Dell had to come in and replace it. And uh, I've had a whole lot of software problems. Um, and even this morning, try to turn it on and nothing happens. Blue screen pops up, Windows failed to load correctly. How the heck does that happen? So, Windows still sucks, but it's, it's how work gets done. Um, we are drawing on AutoCAD Mechanical. Um, I have not updated from 2020 because that may even be 2019 still. Um, if your experience has been like ours, when you update, things go wrong. We draw with AutoCAD Mechanical and we use HydroCAD tools. So if you don't know what that is, I'm really curious to know, are you messing with SprintCAD um, or one of only one or two others I'm even aware of? AutoSprint, AutoCAD, HydroCAD, it's all two dimensions and we can elevate it and send it to somebody coordinate. Again, just to reiterate, the only reason I'm doing this video is because nobody here made me confident 
to take the next step to get certified. And it was basically me psyching myself out. Uh, but I, I didn't have somebody to confidently tell me what I needed to use. And at this point, I'm confident I'm going to use this to prep for the hydraulic side. Even if you're a newbie who doesn't know this, if you use FireTech study material, you can pass your level one. And from the sounds of it, if you make it past level one, level two would probably be easier. So thanks for watching. Look in the description. I'll try to leave a link uh, back to the blog. Um, I've got a really old, really old NYSIS study guide. At this point, I'm going to say don't rely on that. But that's what this is for. That used to be all I had. Um, it was amazing for the work element format. But today, I'm going to say don't rely on it. Um, you, you will learn some things because it's very old school, um, but take it for what it is. Uh, it is an out of date <laughs> 1992 edition um, for a test format they no longer use, uh, but it'll be up there. So thanks. Leave some comments. Tell me, tell me what you guys think. If you've already had your test, um, if it's coming up, uh, what your experience has been and definitely, you know, what kind of company are you with? In this crazy time, if you do what we do, your job is secure. Thanks for watching.